So in order to build this fuzz face circuit and understand what's going on, we have to examine some common transistors. And as an intro to this, we're going to talk about two types of transistors today and the functions that they do in an electrical circuit. What I won't be doing is discussing how they're made or how the semiconductors work inside them, although I will link you to some resources if you're interested in how these actually work internally. We're more interested today in how they work operationally to get our circuit up and running. So here I've drawn two common types of transistors, an MPN and a PMP. And transistors really have two things they can do in a circuit. They are either a switch, and this usually relates to direct current, so they can be on or off. Hence why they're used in computers, digital zeros and ones, off and on. Or as we are going to be using them, an amplifier, and that really applies for alternating current signals, such as electronic audio signals from guitars and synths and things like that. So looking at these two common types, we have an MPN, stands for negative, positive, negative, and describes how they're made, basically. And you'll see that it has a base, a collector, and an emitter, and note the direction of this arrow pointing outwards in the MPN type. Then we have a PNP, as used traditionally in the fuzz face, because these were far more common when they first made the fuzz face. That also has a base, a collector, and an emitter, but have a look at the arrow. It's pointing inwards, um, and I've just highlighted there a different arrow. So this denotes the direction of conventional current flow. So in an MPN, it flows from the collector through the transistor and emits from the emitter. The PMP is the opposite way around. So what happens is the current flows into the emitter and through here and out of the collector. And as such, we either have to use a negative power supply with a positive ground, as we will be using in a fuzz face circuit over here, or we have to remember when it's a switch that is ordinarily off. So, um, one of the best ways of telling what transistors you're using these days is to grab yourselves one of these testers. They cost about seven pounds on Amazon um, or eBay even and they're based on a Arduino chip which you can see in there and that's the crystal you can see there and this is uh, you'll see this is surface matter electronics which we haven't got into yet we're using very much through hole components at the moment so not very expensive probably one of the most handy things that I've bought for making circuits and what I'm going to use it for now is just to test some transistors and show you what it says and we'll discuss what that means. So let's start off with a, you see that, a 3904. So it says 2N3904. 3904 is the type of transistor this is. And this, I believe, is an NPN transistor. So let's put it in our tester. Clamp it in. And I'll press the test switch and see what it says. So it's telling me that in slot one, that's that one there, I have the emitter. So you'll see this transistor has a curved back. So I now know the emitter is this side of it. Two is the base and three is the collector. See the arrow there? It's an MPN. And it's telling me it's got a HFE, otherwise known as gain. 212. That's pretty good for small signal amplification. It's gone into power saving mode. So let me just leave that one out by the MPN drawing and then we'll grab the PNP equivalent and you'll see that this is a 3906. So it's the same thing, it's just the PNP rather than the MPN version. And again, I'll put it in here exactly the same way around and I'll press the button. And again, it's telling my, me my emitter is in one, base is in two, collector is in three. Slightly lower HFE, but if I tested another one, I might get up more than 200. And um, this is why sometimes you have to test transistors even with the same serial numbers to make sure you're getting ones in your batch that are useful in your audio circuit. 
So you'll see now it's saying it's a PMP and note the direction of that arrow before it goes into power saving mode. There we go. So what I've done, put that one there, that's two examples, is I've built up a couple of circuits using these different transistors. And these are just simple switch circuits that are lighting up an LED. So I will bring those over. Just put these transistors away in my uh, transistor stash. Here's our circuits. Now at the top, we have a PMP circuit. I'm just going to put my um, pen there a second so you can see there's a transistor there. Resistor, resistor, and then here's the exact same circuit. It looks like the same thing. So just take a couple of minutes to have a look at this, and I'll just um, take the battery off to stop the LEDs being so bright. Here we go. So take a second to look at this and see if you can spot the difference between this circuit up here and this completely separate circuit down here. So these are two separate circuits and they're slightly different. See if you can spot what's different about them. So if you said the power is different, the way they're being powered, you are correct. So if we look here, this is the positive rail on this red stripe, and this is the negative rail. And if we have a look here, we're feeding a negative rail into this resistor. It's going through this LED to this transistor, and this is the positive. So this is plus 9 volts, or it's 0 volts, and this is minus 9 volts, depending on how you think about it and what I said about potential difference in the last session. And then you'll see this is from the black negative lead and it's going into the base of the transistor. So all of that is telling me that this is a PNP circuit. Down here, you'll see that instead of the blue stripe, the negative side of the battery, which by the way is feeding over here through these two red leads, the positives going over and the negatives going over. So Red is my positive rail, and blue is my minus rail. Either of these can be ground, it depends how you think about it. So here you'll notice, look, this is fed from the red rail, unlike this one, which is fed from the blue rail. And here we're going to the blue rail, and this one's going to the red rail. This one again, fed from the red and not the blue. So these two circuits are doing exactly the same thing. They have the same transistor values, 470 ohms and one kilo ohm, one kilo ohm, 170 ohms, exact same LED. And if I apply power to them, what's happening is a small current, or actually fairly large current, is going into the base of this transistor, it's turning it on, and it's turning it fully on, it's in saturation mode. And that is indeed turning the LED on. But if we think about it here, what we're actually getting is a flow that's going this way through this one and this way through this one. And that's because this is a PMP and this is an MPN. So slightly different in operation. So when we look at circuits for the fuzz space, and here's some PCBs to build the fuzz faces on. You'll see that these look absolutely identical. And even if we turn them over, you'll see apart from some of the writing, they're perfectly identical. Now the thing that's different about them is at the bottom. So you notice at the bottom it says an MPN silicon fuzz face, although I've got some uh, germanium and PN transistors that I'm going to build onto this one. And PNP germanium, which is far more common in the 60s when this was designed. But look at the battery terminals, minus, plus, and over here, 
because we're using an MPN, uh, the other way around. So we could say uh, this circuit here is positively grounded and the positive terminal is grounded and the negative terminal is providing it minus 9 volts. Whereas this one is more traditionally grounded from the negative terminal and we're getting plus 9 volts. Other than that, they're functionally identical. There's only one thing we need to adjust as well, just one resistor in the circuit for that. I also see volume and fuzz at the top. These are for potentiometers, which are controls that we'll put in. Okay, so that's how a transistor works as a switch. Now what we're going to look at is how a transistor works as an amplifier.